So I'm Bat Orkons and uh, I work in agriculture and he's my yeah, and uh, I I am his friend, and I'm working as a data engineer. I work as a data engineer, and uh, I uh, studied astronomy. So uh, at first, I want to talk about a little bit about my work. I work in the fields, and we are making experiments with uh, plants, and that's for we need a way to count the plants we working with, and uh, there is a traditional. Uh, way to do that and it is counting by hand and uh, in one hectare uh, there are approximately like 70,000 corn and we have to count them each individually and uh, just walking and we are um, many times hiring people to do that work but it's there must be an easier way to do that. And this is how we started to develop this project. And this is, uh, at first, uh, you have to have a drone and you have to go out on the field and take photos of the plants. And uh, you have to create an NDVI raster and then do you need in the next step a uh, software which is QGIS to count the plants. So this is a normal drone and for an NDVI you need two bands and these two bands are uh, red and near infrared. So this is a picture of a cornfield this one and uh, this is a simple data of a corn field this is an rgb picture and uh, here is the, the the data we need and as you can see uh, below zero is not plants and above zero is a, a plant and the healthy plant plants are more close to one and uh, diseased plants are close to zero and we sometimes want to count the diseased plants or the healthy or all the plants so we can use this information as well. So as you can see there are satellite images of uh, countries and continents and for example if you are good in geography you can say that in this part this is a mountain part mountains part of the USA and there are no uh, gr green there and this is where the NDVI value is closer to one so uh, as I work, I go out on the field and take the photos and then you have to mesh the photos together. So you are not uh, uh, working with one photo, but like two, three hundred photos of a field. But you have to stick together the photos. Uh, there are softwares to do that, for example, Pix4D or Agisoft. But we at my company, uh, we work with an outside third party. They do the the things and they send back the photos to us. And here is a TIFF file and these are rows of corn and we are uh, we have to count these and we can colorize it as you can see and here is the NDVI value from 0 to 6.8 and uh, sometimes there are noises which can affect the outcome. For example, these two lines or rows are, um, are tractor prints. And uh, we had to measure so the, the software doesn't count everything. Or for example, they can be with between the rows and we don't want to count them. We only want to count the row of the corn. And how can we do it? Yeah, so um, 
now comes the astronomy part because this problem uh, that uh, we have a raster and we have stuff on the raster which we want to count this has been uh, solved uh, or good progress was made on this topic by uh, astronomy uh, people and the, the general workflow is the same so we have like a drone uh, we get like get the images um, we deal with the background just as uh, we mentioned in the uh, agriculture case that we don't care about uh, some stuff on the image but we care about some other stuff uh, we identify the sources like uh, and then we like separate the sources to different ones so we can actually count them and uh, this is the astronomy version of the drone and then it creates this kind of pretty images uh, this is like the similar to like the rgb image which we have seen of the corn plant corn field but this is not the image we work with because in astronomy but we work with images like this one so this is this is like an ndvi raster but of course it is flux and not ndvi itself those things are the stars of course the green lines are not the stars and uh, i included this uh, animation to show that uh, the background which uh, the stars are placed on is like not constant and uh, that's similar in the agriculture case as well in this case like a planet is obstructing the view that's why it's doing what we can see that it is doing and uh, we have to deal with that because in this case we care about the stars and uh, here like this is like simulated data uh, this, this is simulated data for galaxies but you can imagine that these are corn plants and uh, these are 2d gaussians and we have that with the background by uh, this stage so we want to somehow like count the galaxies so first we need to identify what is a galaxy and what is not a galaxy which uh, which we can use astronomy softwares to do so uh, and uh, in this image we can see that uh, what is a galaxy and what is not a galaxy but as you can see this is not re yet ready to be counted because like these two are like uh, together and these two are together and whatnot so we need to like separate the different galaxies to have different values in the mask which is called the source uh, de-blending uh, and uh, and uh, we would like to do the same with Austro with the uh, corn plants and we would like to reinvent the wheel as little as possible and just use the ready-made tools which other people have uh, worked on because they are pretty good uh, and uh, this is the overview in like one single corn plant or galaxy pair that galaxy galaxy source not source uh, one galaxy two galaxy and then one two and then we want to scale this counting up uh, and uh, the the that we implemented this process in QGIS so uh, the workflow is similar to previous case that but instead of like counting one by one other uh, corn plants on the raster uh, by hand uh, we just do this with this plugin and uh, first we like I, uh, we uh, define which area we care about we don't necessarily have to define this we can just do it in the entire raster but uh, the runtime is uh, mm, better if we just uh, apply the algorithm in the areas which we wanted to uh, which we care about uh, so we just create a bunch of rasters which are really easy to do with extraction tools so this is like nothing new which is good because we want to make it as simple as possible and then uh, once we have the areas of interest defined uh, and the rasters we can uh, we can uh, launch the the plugin which is uh, which is called ndvi it's kind of a the name is not important but uh, to able to count the plants uh, we need to like describe the raster to uh, to the plugin and uh, there are like as you can see like several like input fields and th these values are not hard to find once you know what you are looking for uh, and uh, this is a overview of the input fields mm, first you of course have to define what rasters you care about and then you have to define uh, 
so-called uh, like the background offset, which is just uh, like the NDVI values for the parts of the field which is not a plant. Uh, and uh, because this is like the model of what's going on. So like here we have the plant, here we have not the plant. And uh, what we want to do is to move this to to uh, zero level so we can just fit a bunch of Gaussians in it. Because we kind of approximate the galaxies or the plants as the Gaussians. So we just gonna move offset this a bit so we don't have the background noise. Uh, that, and that's the background offset. And we can just find it using like the inspect tool. So it's quite nice. And the kernel is just describing how big we expect the corn plants to be, which is useful because uh, the smaller things uh, like weed uh, can have different sizes and then we can feel that for the plants, for the corn. And then we don't have, we are not counting the things which you don't want to count. And uh, and uh, it, it's, it just, it just not like a normal 2D Gaussian. Where the, this is like full width at half maxima and that's the kernel size. So like how much we, how much uh, mm, far away from the center we are using the Gaussian. Um, and uh, once we have defined everything, uh, we can, um, I mean, I mean there, there are some other stuff, but like the other stuff is not, it's just like minimum how many pixels you want a corn plant to be and what is a neighboring pixel like it's touching on the corner is that neighboring or is that not neighboring this matters when we count stuff and uh, the the blending thresholds and the minimum contrast for object separation is just uh, how sensitive the script is and then uh, we like this is the i think i'm yeah this is the the main part of the plugin which does all of this and most of it is just astronomy so it's pretty good that uh, we didn't reinvent the wheel yeah uh, and it, it outputs stuff like this so here it draws the corn plants according to the specification which we specified and if we are not happy with the output we can just change the parameters and run it again but uh, we found that uh, after like a few few times we can change the parameters a bit and then it will be um, nearly perfect and gives the result much faster than if someone counted 600 uh, yeah, plants. So overall we found that this is efficient even though we are not always uh, be, be able to guess the perfect uh, parameter setup on the first go but we are it's pr still pretty good uh, and uh, it produces stuff like this as well this is another uh, uh, output and as you can see these are not Gaussians but like they are made of many Gaussians so like or they can be modeled as made of many Gaussians so it's kind kind of works uh, and uh, it the source separation works if there is a subtle point between two sources if there is no subtle point between two sources like in this case, then we are not going to be able to separate the two corn plants, which is going to make the counting harder because uh, then we will count this as one, but it is supposed to be two. And uh, yeah. Uh, yes, we, the, the software is not uh, really finished. There are so many areas that must be improved. So, uh, for example, we did tests and I flew above a, a small area and we, I counted by hands and I compared the data between the, the, my count and the software's count and it was really good results. It was, the correction was like uh, uh, about one or two percent. It was really good. But if the corn is bigger, then the data is going to uh, be more false. And if it's too small, that is also a problem. So you must you must have a specific time to do it. And we could improve it, uh, this method. And um, yes, this is this is a place to improvement. Or, for example, there is another big field in the agriculture that has uh, that is uh, currently um, resource. Uh, 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 
he researched, uh, and that is weed detection. So this is a very uh, important topic these times because uh, in the Europe European Union, every year there is less and less uh, chemical that are, that is allowed to defend your plants and uh, you must somehow uh, defend your uh, plant or field from the weeds and this can be one of the improvement that i fly my drone above my field and one week later or two weeks later i fly it again and i uh, check the differences and in this, these differences, uh, you can uh, filter the weeds, actually. But this must be also improved. Uh, yes. Uh, so the algorithm is not so user-friendly yet. <laughs> that is also a um, thing we must improve. And for example, cloud processing will be also good that you if there you have uh, so big areas you want to do the research then uh, you need a lot of computation power and maybe you don't have it at home but there are online uh, possibilities to count or do the math and this is also um uh improve and we could make and um non-uniform background handling that is also important because in these pictures the background is mostly ho homogeneous but if the background is not so nice then the counting won't be successful and that is also an area of improvement Me? Yeah. Uh, uh, and and uh, like uh, there are some other areas where this could be useful like uh, counting islands uh, this is like uh, some island this is some um, uh, this is a picture of some islands from like uh, french uh, polynesia and uh, it they are not in open street map yet so it's a uh, kind of time consuming to map them also we can just use this one to map the islands and uh, in 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 general, when you have like rasters with like stuff on it, which is can be roughly assumed to be Gaussians, and you want to count them or generate uh, polygons around them, then we think that this is a reasonable way to do so. Uh, and uh, if the counting stuff on a raster is not uh, applicable to many other people, uh, then maybe the tools are, which is like uh which Ast uh, astropy and uh, photo tears these are two python uh, projects uh, highly related to each other but uh, these have very nice uh, raster processing uh, tool uh, functionalities as well and if you want to do something like this i hope you went to the how to boil the qgis plugin talk in the morning or if you haven't then this article is really nice and uh and uh, if you just want to do the chores once and you don't want to do them again and again, then uh, this uh, QGIS plugin CI is also very helpful because you just do it once and then it will be deployed and then you don't have to remember how to do it. And then thanks for your attention. Thank you very much for this great talk. So, questions. The first one over here. Microphone for the recording. Lena Fischer of University of Copenhagen. Um, question. I have three questions for you. When you fly, do you fly systematically with overlap or do you take just single? 70%. Okay. Um, and you have, uh, you say you outsource your, your um, manipulation or, uh, for, for making author photos. I can recommend a web ODM. You can do it. That's open source. You can do it freely, and it's very and there is also lightning, so you can do it uh, in, in the cloud. Have you thought about doing this with this surface model and terrain model instead of using the NDVI? Uh, actually, I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So I know for sure that big companies are researching this area. This is a, currently a very um, 
researched area right now in agri agriculture. And the most common method is using AI. So grown up corns are counted by AI and uh, not NDVI, but uh, for us, I work in an, um, development, we need to know uh, when they are small. And if they are small, we uh, the best way I found is uh, NDVI, but maybe that's also a possibility. Yes. Another question here. Yep. Okay, so thank you for the presentation. Actually, I'm curious to know whether you've thought about using this in intercropping systems, especially in uh, cultivated areas where are, like there are crops with uh, almost similar uh, NDVI reflectances or spectral reflectances, or you haven't given it a thought? Sports session for me. <laughs> No, we only used it uh, in corn, so, uh, but there are only a small amount of uh, crops that are uh, currently can do this, like corn or sunflower, maybe sugar beets, but like wheat or, or barley, it's possibly not going to work because the individual, in the, there are so many, um, overlap between the uh, individual plants so it's one sec does someone else have a question <laughs> no all right you are using uh, multispectral images using rgb and using indexes as a greenness in index have you been thinking about that so you could compare uh, this special for the corn and this is grass the ZRGBs uh, pay the same uh, high can also do good because they're in the channel. Even the, the, the new violet show a higher resistance, so you can actually take uh, when the voice rays, you know. Yeah, this project is in no means completed, just uh, it was good enough for whatever we wanted to be good enough for. So uh, I think these ideas will definitely help if we develop this further. Uh, yes, th so thanks. Awesome. It's always nice to have a talk because you get lots of feedback and nice ideas. <laughs> yeah. What other questions are there from the audience? How high do you have to fly with a drone to use AstroPi or is it okay if you are low and... <laughs> I did an experiment with 20 meter, 30 meter, 40, and uh, in our country, I am from Hungary, the maximum altitude allowed is 120 meters, but at that height, you need a uh, way better camera resolution that we currently have. So for me, the optimal was like 30-ish, 20 to 40 meters. Can you estimate the amount of time that you save? I mean, manually counting would be days, I guess. How long does your process take now that it's automated? So uh, roughly for one hectare, um, I would say using this method, you need like two hours, one hour for the making the pictures and another hour to use the, the plugin, but by hand, it's uh, like one day. Awesome. Last chance for questions. Yes. Sure. Uh, you. Did you compare uh, your the the result of your plugin with the uh, your counting into the field? Uh, if you compared your automatic results with the manual counting. Yes, I did. Uh, when, with one area, I uh, actually is the same the pictures from. I count, counted by hand around 550, and uh, the software used a little less, like 
one or two percent less around that so like 520 ish and i think that's but if 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 you cannot find the perfect time to fly then the results are going to be much worse i think uh, i have one thought to add to that like that uh, because the output is so like and like conventional if you just see that like oh it missed one you can just mark as polygon that hey here is another one so it's like yes uh, we have a correction actually we can do in this plugin that um, if you run the algorithm and it counts the plants and but you can zoom in and add manually points if it missed something or you can delete points if it counted to where there was only one plant so you can c correct it manually as well super cool all right so one last hand of applause for paul and butter and <laughs>